for every time I turned my back on him. For the times I rejected the poor and hungry. For the holidays when I hurt the ones I love. For the way I judge people I know nothing about. For the days I think I can do it all on my own. For the stuff I gathered but never needed. For the times I thought I was better than someone else. For the mornings I woke up and decided to carry my own burdens. For the envy I allowed to hollow out my soul. For the excess that I secretly loved. For the silence when I should have shouted. For the shouting when I should have been quiet. For the words that cut deep for the selfishness that I hide, for the lust disguised as love, for the way I wasted precious time, for the people I refused to forgive, for the feelings of inadequacy, for the addiction I can't kick, for the poor whom I ignored, for the laughter at another's expense. For the times I only acted generous. For the fear of failure. For the fear of rejection. For the fear of everything. Jesus died to forgive us of our past and to give us freedom, love, and hope for the future. Our scripture for tonight is from the New Testament, from the book of Galatians, We're looking at Galatians 6, verses 14 through 16, Galatians 6, verses 14 through 16. Are we reading? For my part, I am going to boast about nothing but the cross of our Master, Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, I have been crucified in relation to the world. Set free from the stifling atmosphere of pleasing others and fitting into little patterns that they dictate. Can't you see the central issue in all of this? Is it, it is not that you and I do submit to circumcision, reject circumcision. It is what God is doing. And he is creating something totally new. A free life. All who walk by the standard are the true Israel of God. His chosen people. Peace and mercy on them. The Lord's blessing on the reading, the hearing, and the applying of this text to our daily lives. We've embarked on a journey, a journey together through the events of Holy Week, to come alive to God's story, which transforms our life by His grace. We started our Holy Week journey with Palm Sunday and coming alive to Jesus' life, which was above and beyond our understanding. Tonight, we will remember Good Friday. We will not look down in fear or defeat, but hold our heads high as we focus on the cross and come alive to what Jesus Christ did for us. It is difficult to look at death, isn't it? Literally every day, though, we hear about more and more deaths, as from tornadoes, earthquakes, shootings, and invasions. With reading and hearing so much news about people's dying, we stare death in the face every day. But it is in these moments that we can remember what is most important. On Monday, Thursday, yesterday, Jesus did not practice social distancing. He gathered the twelve in the upper room so that they could observe the Passover and learn from their leader, Jesus. 
Disciples learn from their teachers and follow their commandments. Jesus taught his disciples a new commandment that I give to you, that you love one another. John 13, 34. The English word mondi comes from the old French and earlier Latin term meaning commandment. On that first Monday, Thursday night, and on Good Friday, Jesus was putting his money where his mouth is by giving of himself and thus following his commandment to love one another. He would be arrested in the dark of that Monday, Thursday night. The sky, as the choir sang, would turn dark from noon to 3 p.m. on Good Friday as he gave his own life on the cross. When the Apostle Paul considered the cross, he said it in this way in this evening's text from Galatians 6.14. But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. To look at the cross is to recalibrate your life around the cross of Christ and receive the confidence from coming to know the God who created the universe, lay down his life for you. Wow. I want to draw attention to a word in that verse that I just read, Galatians 6, 14. It's the word boast, B-O-A-S-T, boast. Far be it from me to have confidence in anything other than the cross of Jesus Christ. Our confidence comes from looking at this moment of unbelievable suffering. The Greek word translated boast or exalt literally means to hold your head high. Hold your head high and look at the cross of Jesus Christ. Now we live in a look down society. When you stop at a stoplight, pay attention to the people in the other cars around you at that light. Many are not looking up at the light are looking out, but they are looking down at their phones. I heard that 483 Texans died in 2022 from distracted driving. And looking at their cell phones while driving was the main reason for distractions, the distractions that caused those accidents. Some of the, the sidewalks at the busy intersections in German streets, now have down, down here, they have these visual indicators that say when the light is changing. So when people are looking at their phones, they don't have to look up, they can look down and see if the light has changed and that they may safely be across the street. We look down all the time. We look down at our computers. We look down to, to read text, to stand over a countertop and prepare a meal, and even to pray. So many of our daily opportunities to serve, our daily activities, and our habits cause us to look down. Whenever we look down, we are compressing the spinal cord in a negative way. Dr. Glenn Dooley could tell us that we are literally cutting off some of the function of our nervous system every time that we look down and then we are getting a pain in the neck. One of the most powerful things that we can do to correct this problem is to throw our shoulders back, tilt our neck back, lift our chins, and look up. This posture can help restore life to the body. It's the posture that the Apostle Paul challenges us to have today in order to restore vital function. This posture is a corrective 
measure that we take today to remind ourselves that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We hold our heads high about nothing else than the cross of Christ. Looking at his life and what he has done for us allows us to recalibrate all the ways in which our lives have gotten out of alignment. We don't hold our heads high about the importance of our work. We do not hold our heads high about material purchases. We do not hold our heads high about gifts or talents. We do not hold our heads high about contributions or accomplishments. Rather, we follow the example of Jesus Christ who stepped out of heaven into earth and made himself of no reputation. So look up. And hold our heads high. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Hold your head high as you look to the Lamb, Jesus of Nazareth. Hold your head high to the one who ate with sinners and welcomed outsiders. Look upon the, the one who said, let the children come to me. For such is the kingdom of heaven. Hold your head high and look on the one who never forced himself on anyone yet welcome and listen to everyone. Hold your head high while the Son of Man walks upon the water, calms the sea, casts out demons, and feeds the hungry. Hold your head high as you look to see that the blind receive sight, as the lame learn to walk again, as disease is healed, and as those who are held captive to their sins are set free. Hold your head high and look to the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. See Him. Experience Him. Look at Him now and remember this day occurred not quite 2,000 years ago. For last night, He was betrayed. He was abandoned by His followers. You know, His followers, the ones that were waving palm branches. Oh, I love Jesus. On Palm Sunday, where did they go? Hmm? He was abandoned by them, denied by his closest friends. He was blindfolded and mocked. Today, he was mocked by Herod's soldiers. He was whipped by the Romans. Contrary to what you might have heard, the Romans had no 39 lash limit when they were punishing someone who was not Roman. Jesus was beaten until the Roman soldier holding the whip finally got tired. They twisted a crown of thorns and jammed it on his head. And then Pilate had him brought forward to tell us to behold him. In the same way that John the Baptist told us to behold him, so did the Roman governor Pontius Pilate on Good Friday. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and a purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Behold your man. After all that, Pilate declared him not guilty. Just a Friday morning of Roman mockery, but the crowd wanted more. That is what violence does. Contagion of violence in just four or five days. What do you want me to do, the wimpy pilot asked. Take him away, they shouted. Crucify him. I know that we cannot physically see him now, but as best as we can see in our mind's eyes, we can look up to him and look upon him, battered and beaten, abused and abandoned, with only one motivation. That is, the Monday, Thursday's new commandment to love one another. Christ loved us by laying his life down for us. On Good Friday, his execution was ordered. 
He carried his cross through the winding, narrow streets of Jerusalem. And since he would not bear the cross on his own, the Roman soldiers commanded someone else to carry it along the path. Have you ever visited the Biblical Arts Museum on the northwest corner of North Park Mall? If you haven't, I would encourage you to do so. They have statues of the Via Della Rosa, the sorrowful way. The real way of sorrows was made of, of stone pavers, was filled with shops and patrons, and crowded like at no other time of the year. For during Passovers, Jerusalem's population expanded by 400%. The battered Jesus painfully would travel this Via Dolorosa, travel it to the cross, where the intention of the Romans was not just crucifixion, but also humiliation. The Romans were setting an example for any others who might be tempted to rebel against the Roman Empire. And then his body was laid down and attached to the beams of the cross by Roman nails. 1 Peter 2.24 says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, the cross, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. The New Testament writers would reflect upon the cross of Jesus and declare our sins canceled with the pounding of those nails. In his wounds, there is healing. And a few moments later, he would finish this work as the choir sang and breathe his last. His death covered our sins. God's righteous judgment for sin fell on Jesus. He absorbed it and drained it. Christ battled the forces of evil. And Easter, my friends, will show us the verdict. To hold his suffering in our hearts, creates an overwhelming gratitude and humility. It's almost impossible not to bow your head in sorrow and repentance. And yet, we look upon him. We determine to know nothing else but Jesus and him crucified. Therefore, hold your heads high and look to the cross of Jesus Christ with thankfulness for what Christ has done for us on that cross. Charles Wesley wrote, No condemnation now I dread. Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in him my living head and clothed in righteousness divine. Behold, I approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. Now you know the refrain here. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, would die for me? Eternal Heavenly Father, how amazing it is that you would love us enough to go to the cross on our behalf and die there. We know, O oh Lord, that you took our sins to the cross where they were nailed, and we are thankful. For you made it possible for us to have a saving relationship with you through Jesus Christ. You made it possible for uh, us to have hope. In a world of death, we know that there is hope in you, O oh Lord. And so may we be people of hope 
especially now as we walk toward Easter. For we are thankful for our many blessings. We ask these prayers in the name of the crucified Christ. Amen. Amen. Oh.